You know what time it is, shippers. Time to explore pairings and fandoms. And today we dive into the X-Men to deal with a much requested ship, that of Cherik. The pairing of Charles Xavier, Professor X, and Eric Leshner, AKA Magneto. I apologize for my pronunciation. I spent a long time trying to listen to it. This is Shipper's Guide to the Galaxy, and let's get to know this ship. Cherik is one of the most popular and well-known ships within the X-Men fandom, but this was not always the case. However, the relationship between these two characters is old and dates back to the earliest days of the X-Men comics, wherein they debut as antagonists, but their history is slowly revealed. Charles Xavier is the founder and often the leader of the X-Men and has dedicated his life to pursuing equal rights for mutants by working with humanity to create a world where they can live side by side, despite the general public's distaste for mutant kind. While Magneto, by contrast, believes in mutant superiority and that mutants must defend themselves as they cannot live amongst humans for they will never be accepted and in fact will actively be hunted if they do not take action first. Despite these glaring ideological differences, the two are actually extremely close friends, bordering on something more. The two met in Israel at a clinic for traumatized Holocaust survivors and quickly bonded and formed a deep intellectually based friendship, eventually revealing their mutant powers to the other. However, their ideological differences force them down different paths as they are both fiercely dedicated to their ideals. And while they believe the other to be wrong, they still have an intense respect for each other and a small hope that they can convert the other to their own way of thinking at some point. This struggle of friendship versus duty has been a key component of the characters for many years, as it has been shown that personally they are both quite fond of each other and will drop pretty much anything if the other needs their help. However, they are also 100% dedicated to their respective causes and groups. Well, more like 95%. 85, maybe 75 for Eric. While this dynamic was often explored in the comics, it was not widely shipped until the X-Men films, which began in the year 2000, and even then it didn't explode until 2011's X-Men First Class. So what happened? Well, prior to First Class, the predominant depictions of Xavier and Magneto have been of them as older men. There is a definite bias in society towards youth, particularly when it comes to romance and sex. And since the X-Men is made up largely of young teens, most readers being younger than themselves identified more with the team than with their older leaders. Older people in love and sexually active is not a place everyone wants to let their minds wander to. And while the tag old guys in love was popular, it was easier for many to get behind the younger and more virile McAvoy and Fassbender portrayals from First Class versus the Stuart and McKellen ones. Though the first X-Men movies did open up many fans' eyes to the importance of the friendship between these two men and the inherent tragedy of their story. For the tale of Xavier and Magneto is tragic. It has been admitted in canon by both that they do love each other. Though it is implied that it is a brotherly love, the depth of their feelings for the other make it easier to imagine that their relationship could go beyond the platonic. It is their circumstances and beliefs that keep them from being able to be together, and even so, they still find some time to sneak away and play chess or just talk. Such a deep bond in the midst of such adversity is fascinating to explore narratively. So what exactly is it that is pulling these two together, given the fact that they disagree on something so fundamental to their existence. Well, it is implied in the comics that the two just hit it off the way people sometimes do. It happens and it's always wonderful when it does. While in the films, it is shown that they have a strong and actual psychic pull together and are compatible on a mental level. While the two disagree, it is not because they are incapable of seeing the other's viewpoint. It is simply that their lived experiences do not allow them to embrace what the other believes. Eric, being a Holocaust survivor himself, has seen the worst of humanity and fully believes and expects the worst in people as a result. While Charles, as an abuse victim, walks the line of having seen the worst in people, but also as a telepath, path, not only being capable of seeing everyone's potential for good, but understanding and emphasizing with where all their fears come from. He is also aware that given the scope of their powers, particularly his and Eric's, some level of fear is understandable. The two are equals in intellect and in some ways in power, for while Charles is much more powerful, he uses his morals to keep a firm grip on his powers, so slipping into Eric's way of thinking has the potential to be dangerous for him, and has been in the comics, when Xavier and Magneto's consciousness is merged, specifically the dark sides of both to create a monster. Which brings up another point. 
As these two are both leaders, there are sides of themselves that their students slash followers do not see, but that being equals and friends, they have already revealed to each other. Xavier knows that there is a soft, kind side to Eric that actually wants to believe what he says, while Eric is aware of Charles's dark side and how tightly he keeps a rein on it and his powers. While this appears sweet on the surface, it is important to note that they have both used this information to manipulate each other. The X-Men film and comic fandoms are unique in that there is a lot of crossover between them. They don't put up as many borders as other fandoms, and as a result, their universes intersect quite often in a fictive way. And it is not uncommon to see film elements bleed into majority comic-based fiction and vice versa. For example, the abuse Xavier suffers at the hands of his stepfather Kurt and his stepbrother Kane, as well as his subsequent destruction of Kane's mind, have not been touched upon in the film verse, but for comic fans who know of it, they readily incorporate it into their work. There are some great fics of Charles actually going through a lot of pain having to return to the mansion during first class because he suffered so much there in the past, and that being how Eric finds out that him and Charles have more in common than he first thought. First Class as a film is also well aware of the importance between these two characters, to the point where scenes between Moira and Charles were actually cut to allow the focus to remain on his and Eric's relationship and the eventual tragedy of what is now referred to as their beach divorce. There were many articles following this film discussing how it was really a tragic love story and speculating as to the nature of their relationship. Which is understandable, because it does follow many traditional tropes associated with romance stories, particularly those of star-crossed lovers who are ripped apart by their circumstance. The sad twist of Eric being the one to cost Charles his legs is a cliché, but not a poorly received edition of the film verse. There is so much to play with here, such as Charles unlocking Eric's potential through telepathy, the fact that Shaw's helmet shuts Charles out essentially cutting Eric off from his goodness and severing what seems to have been a fairly consistent mental link, almost on the level of a Vulcan bonding. Or the fact that if you look at it a certain way, Charles killed for Eric by holding Shaw in place for him. There's just a lot to work with and explore here. And this was just within the one film. In the subsequent works, there has been more and more, as well as their continuing stories within the comic verse. Now, this isn't to say there aren't reasons not to ship these two. Heck, some of the aforementioned probably probably qualify. But here are some more. Magneto thinks Charles is naive at best, and at worst, actively ashamed to be a mutant and hiding his true potential so he can play at being a savior. While Charles sometimes has to wonder if Eric is past saving and if he can forgive him for all the people he has hurt and how often he puts his students in danger. The two have both done things that could be considered unforgivable, and the causes they have pledged themselves to are lifetime endeavors. So in order for them to be permanently together, one has to change. However, another unique product of this fandom and the canon it hails from is that it has been shown that both characters have the potential to change, either for good or for evil. In the comic verse, Magneto has led the X-Men for Xavier more than once, serving as a surrogate father for the students much as Charles does, creating a co-parenting aspect that is also seen in first class as the two serve as surrogate parents to their students, representing two distinct yet complementary teaching styles, further adding to the sadness of their eventual separation as it it is seen that the two work excellently together, bringing out each other's strengths. And they do actually on some level want the same thing, but to what degree? I've read so many fics in this fandom, so if anyone is interested in a purely Rex vid, just as a pure kind of recommendation thing to find a good jumping on point, because this fandom is so huge. Just say the word and it shall be done. Fiction for these two covers all grounds, with of course many a fix it, but there is an underlying difficulty in the fix it for this fandom, as as mentioned, one must change for the other, as Professor X and Magneto were created to represent two opposing philosophical ideals, so their stances are clear. However, the beauty of creating one's own fiction is that it can be acknowledged that neither one of them is entirely right or entirely wrong, and perhaps the solution lies in the melding of their two methods rather than an all-or-nothing scenario. There is also a lovely level of acceptance for Charles's disability and many fics dealing with reshaping one's life and accepting changed circumstances rather than simply fixing his legs. It's a fun fandom, it can be heartfelt, fun, funny, fluffy, kinky, oh so kinky. 
Telepathic sex is apparently the best sex. Also, there are many explorations of these characters, both young and old, which is neat. There isn't enough fiction out there dealing with being older and in love, to be honest. The first class film verse has definitely cemented this pairing in the public eye, and it is not going anywhere anytime soon, as more and more people discover how entangled their history always was and continues to be, both in comics and film. There's something intriguing about philosophical enemies that don't hate each other that taps into something important important for real life. And that is the idea that you can disagree with someone and still be friends with them, and even love them. This is especially important in the online community, where a difference in ship can lead to all-out warfare. People don't have to agree, and they don't have to like the same things, but they do need to respect each other. As enemies who do respect each other, Charles and Eric are the ultimate pair. Take and keep your friends close, but your enemies closer to a whole new level. Are you a Cherik shipper, or does another X-Men pairing tickle your fans? Let me know all that and more in the comments below. I love reading all of them. This was Shipper's Guide to the Galaxy. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Check out social media to stay up to date, and as always, stay tuned, for there are as many ships out there as there are stars in the sky.